So what do you do when you have beliefs that work against you? Esther likes that song. She only knows one line from it. I should have just gone to bed. <laughs> Instead of talking, talking, talking all night long and running her off, I should have just stopped talking. And so that's a really good thing. Stop taking score of what is, unless it feels really good. You could have five active subjects in your life, like finances, things that are meaningful to you that you are doing, interests, relationships, things to do with your physical body. You could have several subjects active and four of them, four of the five could be working not the way you want right now. And one could be working the way you want. And if you would give most of your attention to the one that's working, the other four would fall right into line because you'd use that one to be the reason for your broadcast and the reason for your broadcast, no matter what the subject you see, this is important. You don't have to be broadcasting on a specific subject to attract good things on that specific subject. You just can't be broadcasting against something. Did you know that? You didn't know that, did you? That's why you think you've got to be really determined. You think you've got to wrestle it to the ground. You think that you've got to really work hard on it. You just have to get happy about something. Now, here's why. Step one is contrast has caused you to become decisive, vibrationally decisive. That's a good word. You have become vibrationally decisive. You don't even know all the things that you've decided because it's been coming so incrementally, moment by moment, step by step, all through the days of this life and even before. And you've been broadcasting into your vibrational reality, your vortex of creation, incrementally on all levels of your being for longer than we even have time to talk about. And so there it is, you've asked and source lined up with it and law of attraction is attracting to it and the cooperative components have been gathered. And so it's a done deal vibrationally. So then you say, and wisely so, Abraham, so just tell me this one thing, how do I get this amassed fortune out of the vortex and into the bank? How do I make it a reality for me where I can spend it? How do I turn it into the kind of currency that other people recognize? We know you dead guys are all hot on this vibrational currency, but I'd like some cash. <laughs> How do I turn it into something that I can spend? Well, you do that by not contradicting it, by focusing upon the fact that you can't see it yet and you can't spend it yet. That's what faith is. It's a feeling about something even though you can't see it yet. It hasn't translated, it hasn't become vibrationally viable enough that you can translate it through your physical senses. What you see is a translation of vibration. You don't know it because you just do it so easily. What are you doing today? I'm going to go translate some things into vision. <laughs> I'm looking at that now. I'm looking at that now. You don't do that. You were born vibrationally translating into sight and sound and smell and taste and touch. And you were also born translating through your emotional center, your guidance system to let you know whether you are a match to your own inner being who is a match to this thing that you want or not. You can tell by the way you feel. So since what you want is not vibrationally viable enough. Now, what do we mean by that? It hasn't been focused upon purely enough. It hasn't been focused upon without contradiction long enough that it is a strong enough signal. You have not let it become a strong enough signal that now you can translate it into manifestations. You see, how do you think manifestations get here? You don't know because there were so many here when you got here. And for the most part, ever since you got here, you've just been moving manifestations around from place to place as a human race and fighting over them. But if you will use your reasoning mind, hasn't your economy gotten way bigger than it was? You don't remember, but you could if you try. For a long time, it was just tiger teeth and <laughs> bones and occasional squirrel hide. <laughs> way bigger now. Way, 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 way bigger now. And nobody's been trucking anything in from other planets. There's no pipelines from other planets. The new stuff get here yet? No. <laughs> Got derailed out there somewhere. There's nothing that's being trucked in. You are creating it. It's becoming vibrationally viable because you are preparing your receptors to receive it. 
When you ask, it is given, it is revealed. But the question is, are you realizing what has been revealed? Or do you have your, I can't do it, I can't see it, I can't smell it, I can't taste it, I can't touch it, I can't hear it, blockade up, you see. And so, oh, that was so satisfying to say all of that to you. Because you heard it, didn't you? You are the one that translates the vibration into the physical equivalent. So by the time you have put all of this in the vortex and law of attraction has answered it and your inner being has stood there with it and has become the vibrational equivalent of it and is broadcasting to you and to the universe a signal about it and law of attraction is responding to that signal. There is a powerful attraction to the things that you have become. Powerful attraction. It is huge and it is done. And then if you are anywhere in the vicinity of it vibrationally, which means if you're just happy today for some reason, if you haven't remembered not to be happy, in other words, your cork will float. You can hold it under the water, but when you let go, it's going to float back up there. So when you stop doing that thing you do that doesn't let your vibration rise, your vibration will rise. And every now and again, you'll just forget to do something stupid, like not let it rise and it will rise. And for a moment, you'll get a glimpse of something you want just for a moment. Oh, I want her. I want this. I want this. Don't you know that feeling? When you first translate that vortexual creation into something that is meaningful to you, when that idea hatches in your mind, that's a manifestation. Now, it's not the kind of manifestation you want. You don't just want an idea. Yeah, you do. You want the idea because you got to have the idea and you got to practice the idea and you got to become familiar with the idea and you got to hold the idea. You've got to nurture the idea just like the seed of corn has to be nurtured before it comes into something that you can eat and enjoy. So now you have it. That's the answer to every question. Go away now <laughs> and live happily ever after. <laughs>